Hi, everyone. I'm just going to give you a quick demo of the Travel Time plugin into ArcGIS Pro. The Travel Time platform um, is a way of searching the world by travel time instead of by distance. Um, and it's through an API, but we've built a plugin into Pro that lets you use the platform um, without having to write any code um, and in Pro so it can be used with all the other tools available and, and data sets that you may have in Pro. The platform has three um, core functionalities. The first of these is, is time map, and that's around creating isochrones, so reachable areas in a given travel time. The second one is called time filter, and this is about calculating thousands of A to B journey times very quickly. And the third one is routes, and this is the more standard A to B routing um, with turn by turn directions, etc. And all of these tools are available for any um, method of transport. So not just driving, but public transport, walking, cycling, um, and also combinations of those. So driving and then train, for example. And we've made these, these three tools available in a couple of ways in Pro. Uh, the first is in the, in the ribbon at the top. And the second is, is through the toolbar. Um, or the toolbox on the right hand side. The toolbox is for um, is for running the tools off off layers, whereas uh, the ribbon, these tools are, are more for using and um, point and click uh, to run the tools. So just to run them through them one at a time. We have some kind of settings and, and help buttons here, uh, but these three ones in the middle are the, are the quick time map, the quick time filter, and the quick route. So if we go into QuickTime Map, this is the one for creating isochrones. And we can configure this pretty simply. So we choose our, our method of transport. Uh, we can do up to three isochrones at once. Time zone, whether it's you know, leaving, I show me the area I can get to setting off at this time, or um, arriving, which is show me the area I could leave and get to this point at this time. And then the simplest way to run this is just to click on the map. So if we select a point here in, in Oxford, the tool will then run and create those three driving isochrones. So we get our, our 60 minute, our 90 minute, and our 120 minutes isochrone. If I just remove these. We can also run these tools um, by putting in a, an address, and it will then geocode them and run it from there. So if we put an address in here, let's do public transport this time. Say we only want one isochrone, so let's just do 45 minutes. Which is our time of day, but we'll just run this for now. And there we have our 45 minute public transport isochrone from that geocoded address that we put in. So that's the time map uh, tool. The second one is uh, routing. So if we go up here and go on quick route, again, very similar um, configuration. We can run it off addresses. So if we put a, an origin and a, a destination in, public transport again, and run that, it will create our, our public transport route uh, between those two locations. Or we can do it by clicking on the map. So if we wanted to do, a let's say, a cycling route, we can select our origin, select a destination, and it will then return the cycling route between those two points. So again, very, very simple to kind of get up and running with these tools, just with um, yeah, click and point and click functionality. Let's remove these layers. And the final quick tool is this uh, time filter tool. So for this, we need some, um, some data. So I've loaded in 
uh, yeah, 500 odd um, locations or addresses in the UK. And if we select this layer, we can then use this tool. And what this will do is um, calculate the travel time from an origin to all of these 500 points, and then filter it based on those that are, are reachable or unreachable. And for the reachable ones, it will also return exactly what the travel time is. So let's do the driving. I'll run this off a, an address. So it will geocode this. And then from that geocoded point, it will calculate the driving time to all of these points and mark them as reachable or unreachable based on this four hour uh, journey time. And yeah, as you can see, it will it will return those results incredibly quickly. And then we can go into the attribute table and for all the reachable points, it will actually return against each of these IDs, the exact travel time uh, by car. And yeah, it has, it can return yeah, thousands of these incredibly quickly. So those are the, um, the quick tools in the ribbon up here. We can also use those three um, key functionalities through the toolbox. And we have advanced tools and simplified tools. So each of the three functionalities, so the, the isochrones, the time filter, and the routing, has a, a simplified tool and an advanced tool. Uh, the main difference being the advanced tool just lets you configure even more parameters, um, which I'll show you, show you in a second. Let's start with a, a time map. So we've got another layer here, which is uh, just 10, 10 addresses in the UK. And say we want to create an isochrone around each of these addresses. We could use the, the quick tool and go and click on them. But if we use one of the, um, the simple time map tool, we can run this off this layer. So we select the, the 10 UK postcodes. If we do um, public transport, and here you can see we get the full range of possible transport options. So if you just want buses or just trains or driving and train, they're all available here. Do public transport. It's built around time zones, so you don't need to convert the time into, into UTC. You can just choose the time zone uh, that you want and select your time. But let's say we wanted to do 9 a.m. Then, then let's do uh, 30 minutes. And then we have an option um, of how we want to display those results. So normal will just create an isochrone around each of these points. Union uh, will create the, the union of those points, so it will add all those isochrones together. And intersection will just return the area that's reachable from all of those 10 points. So if we run a, a normal one to start with, This will then return the public transport shape around each of these 10 points. Could be very small, could be that this point is actually not near a, a public transport stop and then for it's just returning you know, a walking area. But these ones in London, you get the, the isochrones. Just to show you what the, um, the intersection looks like, for example, Say if we wanted to, uh, we want to find the area that's within a 90 minute drive from all of these points in one go. We can run that as an, as an intersection. Just take a couple of seconds. And there we have it. These are the areas that are within a, a 90 minute drive from all of those 10 points. So if you're looking for you know, overlap of catchment areas, et cetera, this is a perfect tool to use for that. So the next one, time filter. So here we want our, um, our big data set again. So what we can do here is say we have uh, one address, so this might be an office, um, and we've got 500 other addresses, so say customer locations or, or employee addresses. 
we can very quickly do the travel times from all of these um, 500 locations to this one address. And to do that, we use uh, the time filter tool. So if we open this up, so say we want to um, we want to depart from these addresses. So say these are staff homes, and we want to do their commute into work. We could do this. Um, let's say we want to do public transport. Again, we can set a time, and we want them to arrive at. Again, let's do 9 a.m. And we want to work out those that are within 90 minutes. Arrive at our one London postcode. We can then run this tool. And we will then get the travel times from uh, the reachable employee addresses to that office address. Um, and it will filter those, A, visually, into those that are reachable and those that are reachable. But also, again, if you open the attribute table, for the reachable ones, it will give you the exact travel time for all of those journeys. So it's a very, very powerful way of quickly calculating um, hundreds and hundreds or thousands of, of travel times in one go. What's even more powerful um, is say we wanted to calculate the travel times from these 500 addresses, but instead of just to one office or one location, we wanted to do it to all 10 of these locations. So we can do that as well. So say we wanted to do driving. Um, we'll set this to four hours. And this time we want to arrive at any of these 10 locations. So this is going to calculate those essentially 5000 travel times. So from each of these 500 employee addresses to each of these 10, um, say, office locations. So it may take 30 seconds or so, because yeah, crunching through a lot of data. But this will, this will give us essentially a, a journey time matrix um, of the journey time from every single, say, employee address to every single possible office. Um, and this is ideal for yeah, choosing sites, um, office relocations, this kind of thing. So if we then go into this attribute table, this will have, um, yeah, almost 5,000 rows, and it will give you for each of the employees and each of the offices, whether it's reachable and that exact driving time. So it's generated a huge amount of um, very valuable data in, in 30 seconds runtime. And there's no limit to the size of the data sets you can put through this. Um, you know, if you want to put 10,000 points in there, it may just take slightly longer to run, but there's no limits on that. The API is incredibly efficient, um, and it can do it can do 2,000 um, journey times in one request. So it can crunch through huge data sets very, very quickly, and very efficiently. Then the final one to show you is the uh, routes tool. So we'll look at the advanced one this time, just to show you what the kind of extra parameters um, that are available are. So we go to routes advanced. And down the bottom here, we have this advanced tab. Uh, and see this exists on all the advanced tools. And it just lets you configure um, some of the, the deeper parameters of, of what you're looking for. So you can start saying, I want to limit the walking time that someone walks to the station to, to five minutes or 10 minutes. Or for driving and then train, you can set exactly how long you want to let someone drive before they get to the train station. So it lets you really configure um, the analysis you're doing. And we can also set a, a range width. So what this does is we might not care that someone has to arrive exactly at nine o'clock. We might want to know 
um, what's the quickest travel time at any point during the day between those two points. Um, and we can set a range width here. So if we set this as 12 hours, for example, it will return uh, the quickest journey time at any point in that 12 hours. And um, so again, lets you really configure exactly what kind of analysis you're looking to do. And if we just run this quickly, so if we do from our one location, set the ID, again, very similar time zone, we want to do a departure. So leaving this one point and going to the, the 10 other points, we can set a time. If we do uh, public transport, we want to arrive at our 10 locations. Again, choose an ID from that. And we have three different output styles. So this is um, by travel time, we'll, we'll group or we'll color code the routes based on buckets of travel time. By transport type, we'll, we'll color those routes uh, based on the method of transport being used. So each leg of the journey, if it's multiple different types of transport, will be labeled as such. And by journey, we'll just label each individual route um, as a separate, separate color. So if we run this by transport type, and this will not only um, calculate the travel time and, and display the route on a map, it will also produce end-to-end, um, turn-by-turn directions for each of these routes. So it's kind of, it's giving you three, three separate things. Some of these might not be uh, doable by public transport. So I think this is the location that's yet not near a, a public transport stop. But here we can see, we get the breakdown of these routes um, into the different types of transport. And also in the attribute table, we can then see these turn by turn directions for each of these routes. Um, exactly what time the, the, you know, the bus leaves and arrives on which stops, etc. cetera. Um, so kind of three different ways of looking at the same thing. You can look at it visually, you can get your routes, um, and also the travel times and distances for each of these legs of the journey. So that is yeah a really quick overview of, of what the tools can do. Um, they're very powerful. Uh, they can work with very, very large data sets very quickly. Um, they can do this for any method of transport. Um, and this is now available in, in 40 countries around the world. So yeah, UK, all of Europe, or most of Europe, um, US, Canada, Australia, Singapore, South Africa, and a few others. And in terms of what we see people um, using this for already, real estate is obviously a massive one. So site selection based on um, access to employees or a workforce, um, retailers. So where should we open a store or, or which store should we close um, based on customer access and, and employee access and all this kind of thing. And then more generally, anyone choosing, you know, where to open an office, if they have a list of where all of their employees live and 20 potential office locations, they can run one, one tool through here and it will generate all of those uh, commute times um, and give them kind of powerful data to, to make that decision. And then there's also all sorts of other wonderful use cases like um, targeted marketing. So IKEA have used us to, to segment their customers into those that are uh, within 30 minute drive of, of the store and those that are uh, outside of 30 minute drive from the store. Uh, and off that, they can then um, target those, those customers with, with different marketing. So yeah, it's a, it's a very simple tool to use. It's very powerful. It's very easy to set up. It's just running one file that installs it, get an API key, um, and you're up and running. So yeah, we think there's a lot of use cases. Thanks very much.